Okay, and we're ready to do the worksheet for 7C for the Math 4 course. Um, and yes, I had to find a placebo meme. Um, there's humor in there somewhere. All right, speaking of the placebo effect, um, I want you to pause uh, for a moment and I want you to watch that uh, video on the placebo effect. So I'll give you a moment to pause. All right, so you describe what you saw in the video. Uh, we saw that uh, and, and it was an energy drink. And of course I put energy in quotes. Is soda water. But people believe it gives energy. A man hammered seven before and ten after. And the difference was is that he had a, a glass of soda water. Um, so, you know, why do you think the people in the video got stronger? Uh, you know, this, this is, uh, it, it it's all in their head. And this is the thing that uh, we have to bear in mind as researchers is that, you know, we're going to have people in the control group that seem to have the results that we were wanting out of the experimental group, but they did not have the benefit of the experimental whatever extra was giving them. They got a placebo and they still got stronger. Uh, so, you know, sometimes that is gonna happen and we're, we're just, you know, we have to take it into account that, you know, is it possible that people got better on their own without the benefit of this new whatever we're testing? Uh, that's a possibility. All right. Now, let's look at some scenarios and, and see, you know, what the response is. Egbert is trying out new facial hair ointment to make his beard grow faster for no shave November. At the end of November, his beard is three inches long. He concludes, since his beard grew three inches, the ointment must work. What is wrong with his reasoning? Well, hopefully, uh, you know, if he's going to make it grow longer than he knew how long it would grow in the first place without the ointment. Um, you know, there, there's no uh, control about this for comparison. You have no idea what his beard growth would have been without the ointment. And so, uh, uh, you know, that, that's what's wrong with the reasoning. And you know, sadly, we're we're looking at these, and the, this is this is conclusions that people actually make. That's the scary part. All right, a recent medical study testing effectiveness of new medication. Researchers gave participants either the new medication or a sugar pill. Uh, when they came to get the pills, uh, they were told whether they had been assigned to the medication or the sugar pills. So they knew what they were getting. At the conclusion of the study, researchers found the medication was more effective than the sugar pill. Are the results valid and why? Well, obviously, um, I, I would not say that the results are valid because they should not have been told. Should have been a double blind study. This should have been a double blind study and it was not. So uh, there are lots of folks that would question the results here. Um, I don't know.
medication was more effective than the sugar pill. Uh, you really want the people with the sugar pills uh, to see if they would get better too. And that's the problem. Uh, you know, if they knew they were getting the sugar pill, then they had no reason to believe that they might got, get better. All right, identify possible variables that could cause the correlations below. All right, those people who tend to carry boxes of matches in their pockets also have a higher risk of cancer. Um, I'm not sure that I see a connection there. Uh, you know, unless I, with matches, there are chemicals on the match heads uh, that if they're, you know, carrying these chemicals on their persons day in and day out, uh, could they cause cancer? Uh, close contact to the chemicals in a match head. cause cancer. That's, I, I, that's as close as I get to, you know, putting up a correlation between the two. Uh, my initial reaction would be no, if they're in boxes. Um, I don't know how much the, the chemicals would leak outside of the boxes, but uh, that's, that's also a valid question. All right. Oh, let's see, people who drink diet sodas tend to have a higher body mass index weight to height ratio. Um, you know, that almost begs the question, uh, why drink a diet soda? You either think you're fat or you don't want to be fat. So I would say there's a correlation there. Uh, you know, now true, not everybody that drinks has a high body mass, but then again, they may just be trying to keep their skinny figure or whatever. Um, but, uh, you know, that this, this is as much a question of human nature as anything else. All right, students who eat dinner with their family often are more likely to have better grades. Um, I'm actually inclined to say yes on that. Um, you know, and, and the idea is that students who eat dinner with the family uh, are probably more likely to have a structured homework time. You know, you have between this time and that time to do your homework before we get to watch TV. So I would say yes, that, that would be a correlation that I would feel is worth researching. Uh, I think you might find a connection there. Uh, and that's basically what they're asking here is, is that if we were to do the research on this, would we find a connection? Uh, is, is there a correlation between these two variables that um, uh, is worth researching? All right, now we're trying to figure whether a survey, an observation study, or an experimental study would be the best way to collect data for each question. Um, and you also have to kind of explain why. So do smokers get in more car accidents than non-smokers? Um, hmm. I'm not exactly sure that's something that you want to do as an experimental study. Um, the data should be out there. So, um, I, you know, I, I, you look at your three options, experimental study. I don't think I want to do an experimental study on that. Uh, I, I don't think I want to, uh, um, 
you know, look at drivers and look, you know, who's the smoker, who's the non-smoker and watch for accidents. You know, let's just sit on the street corner and watch. I, you know, I don't know if we want to go there. Um, the question would be getting a, a hold of that data. And so uh, I don't know if that's, you know, considered observational. Um, data should be available. on accident rates and smoker versus non-smoker. Now, whether you would call that a survey or an observational study or an experimental study, um, you are not changing anything. So that, that rules out the experimental study. Um, you're not really going around and asking a question. So this falls probably more likely as an observational study. But to define it, you are researching statistics. You're researching statistical data. And so uh, I guess that would qualify as an observational because you're not asking questions and you're not trying to, uh, you know, set up a control group and a, a, a group. Uh, that's as close as I get with that one. All right. What is the student's favorite type of sport at this school? All right. That sounds like something that a survey would handle. Oh. Now, one thing that you would want to be careful of, um, and it's like, you know, going to the football field and asking everybody what their favorite sport is. Uh, they're going to say football by and large. So, uh, you know, you got to watch for bias by location. You know, just simply where you're asking the survey. Uh, you know, if you go to the gymnasium, you might get basketball or volleyball as the, the most likely sport. So again, you have to watch where you do your survey. You know, can you get uh, a random sample? Do people who chew gum while studying do better on tests when they chew gum while taking the test than when they don't chew gum while taking the test? Um, that actually sounds like the makings of an experimental study. Um, And of course, your control group is the ones who chew gum but don't do it during the test. And then the experimental group would be the ones allowed to chew gum while taking the test. Not that I've ever denied my kids the ability to chew gum during a test, but anyway. Um, and again, you have to watch the element of randomness. I'm not quite sure how you would introduce bias into that situation. Because um, in my mind, um, there are factors in doing well on a test that go beyond chewing gum. Uh, things like how much did you study? How much did you do your homework? Uh, so anyway, uh, let's see. How close are we? We are down. We've got a couple more to go. 
All right, how has the percentage of the world's wealth owned by the top 1% of individuals changed over the past 300 years? Uh, I, that sounds more like one of those digging for data kind of situ situations. So we would probably consider this an observational study. That we are digging for data. Now, that's not to say that you're going to find all the data that you want with that. Um, but, I, you know, that, that, that's where you have to start with this. All right, do strawberry plants produce more fruit when growing in a greenhouse or outside? Oh, that sounds like a wonderful experiment. Why do you think this is the best type of study? Because you clearly have, well, for one thing, you're trying to influence one group. You know, you, you clearly have a, a, a focus group, your, your uh, control group, and then you've got the group that you are, you know, let's do it inside the greenhouse and then let's do it outside and let's see which one does better. Uh, you are clearly influencing one group you're not quite sure what, you know, would, which would be better. Um, you know, a greenhouse might have more controlled conditions. And so I would almost expect more production from a greenhouse than somebody outside who was, uh, uh, you know, a victim of the elements. Uh, but uh, you have two clear groups for study. What are the most important issues for voters in a district at the moment? Well, most important to the voter, how are you going to know that except that you go out and you do a survey? Now, I will say this, that half the battle is asking the right questions. Um, but you are asking opinions. And that is what directs you toward a survey is the right response to this. Um, anytime you're asking about opinions, then you know, a survey is gonna be your, your natural response. Well, that is the end of it. So that is the end of the worksheet for 7C.